Anthony and Victoria bring you this AMI This Week Shortcut. Victoria, are you a fan of the film Happy Gilmore? That is a great movie, although it's lost some appeal. When I traveled with my son and his hockey team to Detroit on a team bus, we watched it all the way there and all the way back. Ah, uh, too much of a good thing, I get it. <laughs> well, it's still a hilarious classic from Adam Sandler, and at the heart of it, it's all about overcoming obstacles, helping the ones you love, and of course, finding your happy place. Oh, that's where you're going with this. You're talking about when we visited the Happy Place art exhibit with my guide dog, Alan. Sure am, all work and no play makes these hosts tired and gray. That's why we jumped at the chance to visit this art exhibit right here in Toronto to release that inner child as we visit the many themed rooms of this traveling art installation. After having lots of success in LA and Chicago, the Happy Place exhibition has arrived in Toronto at the Harbour Front Centre. As soon as Victoria and I walked through the doors, we were welcomed by a pair of seven foot stilettos <laughs> made from one million pieces of yellow candy. I thought they were like mints, but they're just painted like Smarties think, or yeah, something. Painted smarties. Yeah. After checking out those crazy shoes, we wanted to see what other themed rooms founder Jared Paul had in store for us at this zany exhibition. So Jared, can you describe the space that we're in right now? Sure, I'm happy to. Right now we are actually in John's Candy Shop here at Happy Place, which is our candy themed room. What we love about this room is it's, it's all pink walls with pops of yellow, yellow floors and yellow. Actually, there's a little bit of white, yellow and white gumball machines. So behind us is, I don't know, maybe the tallest wall of gumball machines I've ever seen. A lot of people like to pose in front of them. Uh, they actually have real gum inside of them. So Jared, why did you want to create Happy Place? Well, I'm in the live entertainment business and I wanted to work with the creative team that I uh, that I get to work with on a lot of other live shows to kind of do something different. We saw an emerging genre of entertainment that was immersive and multi-sensory. So I wanted to do something that just had one and only one purpose, which is to make people happy, maybe leave their problems at the door for an hour and just walk through this place and put a smile on their face. And it definitely did just that. Our second stop, the flower room, where we couldn't help smile, relax and enjoy. Okay, so now where are we? So Victoria, we are in a meadow of yellow flowers and we just came up through these uh, ladders through the holes in the floor and uh, above us now are also more yellow flowers hanging by fishing wire, which is really cool. So like everywhere you look, it's just more and more yellow flowers. It's really cool. It is really cool. And they're not just like single flowers. They're like, there's bunches of them. They're all different heights. Exactly, yeah. Very cool. Up next, we made a quick stop in the XO room with KISS print wallpaper all around the room. The main feature is a five foot X and O sculpture covered in disco ball tiles and a heart through the center of the O where visitors can pose, which Victoria, Alan and I obviously did. I love that dog. Continuing the tour, we checked out the rubber duck room, which features floor to ceiling shelves of hundreds of rubber ducks with a yellow bathtub smack dab in the center full of yellow balls. This is for sure one of the most popular photo op stops. So Victoria and I took turns getting our shot reclining in the tub. These ducks, they're smaller than I thought they'd be. They're like, I don't know, the size of my fist. And they're just right next to each other, all along the wall, all like there's just rows and rows and rows of ducks. Can't, you can't help but smile though. <laughs> Lastly, Jared took us to what he expects will be the main attractions when people visit. Oh, we're actually in the back atrium here at Happy Place Toronto, which was unique to this location for us, which we really embraced. And we have two of our, I'd say, star attractions back here. The world's only and largest confetti dome behind us, where you get to go inside, a button gets pressed, and there's confetti that just whirls around you and air and all kinds of fun. And, and then we have a double 20-foot tall rainbow in front of our pot of happiness that has 20,000 ball pit balls that you can jump into. And people do all kinds of fun, you know, gags going into it and it's just a ton of fun. In the mezzanine, you can find rainbow colored drinks, snacks, and of course, more photo ops. Victoria and I climbed into a full-sized canoe with a mural of a lake and mountain landscape behind. There were also waves carved out of styrofoam in the foreground to make us feel like we were on the water. This installation was created by a local artist, Jasmine Panu. Why was it important to you to get a local artist involved? You know, I think that one of the things when we crossed the border and wanted to come to a different country is to make sure that we understood this culture and, and kind of became a part of it. And I think the only way to do that was to make sure that we brought in other people to collaborate with. 
Before leaving, Jared gave us the chance to check out the confetti dome. And while Victoria and I enjoyed it, and here we go. It was Alan who let loose. All right. Oh, his tail's going. Off harness, he began spinning, leaping, and biting at all the little pieces of confetti. So Victoria, we're back here at the giant rainbow ball pit, and I think this is the perfect way to wrap up our experience here at the Happy Place exhibit. I think we should jump in together. I'm not gonna jump, but you can. I'll just give you a little shove. What? No, no! <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty fun day of work, eh? It sure was. One thing we didn't mention in the story was why Jared chose Toronto as one of the locations. After its debut in Los Angeles and then traveling to Chicago, Jared mentioned that Toronto had always been a city that had spoken to him, and because it's progressive and the people are so polite, he knew it had to be one of the stops. And in an effort to make it a little more Canadian, Jared incorporated some local artist work too. If you would like to visit the exhibit, it's still going on at the old Pawsway building at Harbourfront Centre. Just visit their website, happyplace.me, for more information and to buy tickets.